I woke up just a couple of minutes after the theme was announced at 6 in the morning, stoked and ready. The theme is stuck in a loop. The first thing I did was start writing down some rough ideas and after a couple of minutes of brainstorming I had settled on this idea. Think Doctor Strange meets Rubik from Dota 2. Those were the two main sources of inspiration for this idea. You are a wizard stuck in a time loop. You are tasked with defeating enemy mages by stealing their last use ability and using it against them. Most of you know I like setting up my test scenes with a plane that contains a checker material. This is so that I can visualize better when the player moves. Having a blank material will make this near impossible. Let's work on the player controls. I will create a new empty game object and call it player. Reset its position and then create a sphere that will act as the mesh or body of our player. I'm going to give the player a new material so that it stands out. Since this is a sphere, we need to give it something on the front of the sphere so that we can tell the way the player is currently facing. For the camera, I will be doing a bird's eye view. I created a new script and added it to the player. As its name suggests, this will be the player controller. I will be using Unity's physics engine to move the player. Movement will be very simple. WASD for moving on all directions and I will also do a raycast from the mouse position to the plane so that I can rotate the player accordingly. It's all working nicely. I just need to make the camera move with the player. I could always just make it a child of the player game object, but since I am rotating the player in relation to the mouse position, this will cause the camera to go bonkers. Inside my player controller script, I will add a new function to handle camera movement using a lerp to make it move to the player smoothly. I can change the speeds here if I want to. I think it looks and it feels really smooth. I'm thinking about giving the player some deceleration, but that might not be a good idea. Yeah, I'm just gonna skip that. Let's set up some enemies. I will create a new sphere and give it a red material as well as a script to handle its behavior. I want to give the player an ability to rewind time in a concentrated area to heal itself, force enemies into certain positions and steal abilities that enemies might have used a while ago. So inside this enemy behavior I'm going to make the enemy lose health over time to test this rewind ability. For the rewind ability, I will add a new script to the player and after a bit of prototyping, I had something like this. The ball gets bigger over time and it is launched from the player's position towards the mouse position. Now I need to save the health of our enemies every second so that when we are using a rewind on them, they get healed back up or damaged depending on what health they had back when. Let's test this out. So we can see its health going down and once I use the rewind ability it goes back up. I gave them a wandering function that moves them to a random position so that I can test the next part of the rewind ability which is positions. I basically have to copy most of the code I have already written and instead of storing float variables for health I store vector3 positions. And yep. They all go back to their start position. That's pretty neat. I'm digging it. I don't like how it keeps getting bigger and bigger though. So I'm going to quickly add a limit to how big it gets. Much better. Let's move this a bit and change the yellowish color of the direction of light. I also lower the rewind speed. I want to be able to visualize how much health do enemies have, so I'm going to create an image above the enemy to display a sort of health bar. Cool, you can see it's health going up. 
Next, we have to make the rewind affect ourselves because as of right now, nothing happens. So let's jump back into the player controller and just pretty much copy most of the code we have already written in the enemy script and paste it inside here so that we can rewind the player's health as well as position. You might have noticed that the rewind bubble now spawns where the mouse position is instead of at the player and that is because whenever I use the ability it will rewind the player for a millisecond before going to the mouse position and we don't want that. I could have given it a delay to it but no, I want gameplay to be fast and snappy hence why I didn't want to give the player movement a deceleration. I'm going to change how the health bar looks and then take a small break. We are back and you might have noticed that I gave the enemy's eyes as well as turned the health bar green. I think the player also needs eyes though so let me do that real quick and then hit play. So they are all just wandering a bit. Give them a second so that we can save a couple of positions before we rewind them. Okay, let's see. Alright, time to rename the enemy script to enemy warlock and begin working on some of its AI. First, we will give it a target acquisition function using Unity's trigger. This is very simple. Whenever they enter this trigger, we assign a target to the enemy warlock. If we have a target, we make the warlock face it and go towards it. If it does not have a target, then it just wanders about. Let me get rid of all this and leave only one to test stuff on. So I am very far now. As I get closer, boom, he looks at me and starts to chase me. It also stops at a certain distance. This is the distance from where it will cast most of its spells. Okay, it's time to remove the health loss over time from the enemy warlock now since we know that the rewind ability works. Let's create the first spell that is used by the enemy warlocks and can be stolen by the player. This will be a very simple fireball. When it spawns, it will add a force forward and whenever it hits an enemy or player, it will deal damage and destroy itself. For the visuals, I will just give it a sphere mesh and an orange material. I'll most likely change this in the future for sure. <laughs> Inside the warlock script, we will check if the distance between the player and the warlock is less than the attack range and if it is, then we create a fireball. Um, aside for like a millisecond, it's been destroyed right away and I think I know why. I need to do a quick check to see if this is a fireball created by the player or the enemy warlock. Let's test it out now. Nice, my health goes down. All working as intended. Next spell is a healing ability. This will be an AoE healing ability. Very simple script that accesses the player controller and increases its health. Let's do healing something really high. Let them warlocks attack me a bit and you can see now my health going down on the side here. Now if I add this prefab into the scene. Boom. My, my health is crazy high right now. Now I need the AI of the Warlock to cast the right spell at the right time. So I'm going to create a new function called Smart Casting. And here we will do a few checks to see what spell should we be casting next. Okay, new spell. This will be more of an AoE control spell. After a small delay, a freezing field will appear on the ground, disabling whatever it is inside of it. For a second or two. Inside our Warlock AI, we will add this new spell to our smart casting function. Also, since it has a small delay, we need to try to figure out where the player will be a second from now. We can do this by accessing the player's rigid body velocity and doing a small calculation with that value. Let's test it out. 
If I walk into it, I can't move, but I am able to rewind myself out of it. Ha! <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Let's add a few more enemy warlocks in here. Oh yeah, imagine fighting like 10 or 20 of these guys. That would be mayhem. Now for some UI stuff, at the bottom left will be an icon that shows the hotkey for rewind. Bottom right will be for the spell steal ability and center will be the amount of store positions and health we as the player have. Yes, that's right, you can only rewind yourself so far. Up top will be the health hearts you have. And yes, you can only take 3 hits. Time for another spell. This one will be a mobility spell, a blink. This is very simple script again, we simply move the player a certain amount of units in the current direction that is moving. So here we are back in Unity and I did a few things off camera and that is a defeat condition. Whenever you have zero hearts you lose and whenever you went too far you also lose. You can keep tabs on how far you can rewind down at the bottom here. Also the big bar is your blinking power or how far your blink goes. I think it's time to change some visuals. We will begin with how the fireball looks, or rather how the arcane bolt looks. I don't like it being a fireball, I think it will look better as a purple magic orb looking thing. So I began by creating a shader using the beautiful tool that is shader graph, and then gave it some particles to complement the purplish look. I think that it looks awesome. I'm going to take a little break from programming and Unity for a bit and work on the character model. If you did not know, I love creating 3D assets, they can be very time consuming at times. So I only gave myself about half an hour to come up with the character model. I'm going to be taking inspiration from Rubik, a Dota 2 playable hero. After importing it into Unity, I set up some simple materials for it as well as the animation controller and hit play to see how it would look. I didn't like how its legs and cape would not move when he did so I gave them a dynamic bone to simulate physics when moving. It was time to create a shader for their level plane. I'm going for something really trippy, kind of like square lines crossing one another to make this an abstract plane. After a good while of playing around with it, this is what I came up with. I think I will duplicate the plane and rotate it so that there are even more lines moving about. Now for the most complicated script, spell steal. Basically what I'm doing is whenever you click your left mouse, we will do a ray cast at the mouse position and see if we are hovering over an enemy warlock. If we are, then we access this warlock to get the last spell casted and then give it to the player. When the player presses space, we use the stolen spell. Sounds simple, but it took me a second to get it working exactly how I wanted. We need to differentiate between the spells used by the player and the enemy spells. So naturally, I kept the enemy spells purple and for the player, I changed them and made them green, just like its cloak. I also noticed that the enemy warlocks were not being frozen when inside the frostbite. That was an easy fix though. So this is what we got so far today. I 
I worked so much, I really need to get some sleep now. Well, yesterday before I went to bed, I actually got an idea to create a mesh generator, kind of like the one Sebastian has on his channel, to randomly generate maps for the game. I also played a bit more with the plane shader. I will most likely work a bit more on it before the end of the day. I'm going to open up GIMP to create a few textures for frost viability as well as a couple of more shapes for the plane shader. Back in Unity, you might have noticed I have imported a very simple skybox and have also added the new textures to the plane shader. Let's hit play and check it out. Enemies now don't really have a health bar because I only gave them one health. It was too hard to kill them during my playthroughs, so. I opened up Blender to create a mesh for the frostbite ability. I think how it looks right now, you can really tell what the hell you're looking at since it's just a plane, so I also used the textures I made earlier to create a better looking frostbite. I also give the player some feedback on the delay of the frostbite by using this very same circle. The map is always on the same rotation, so at the start, when it is being randomly generated, I will give it a random rotation as well. I changed the player materials a bit too and gave the staff a particle system that creates kind of like cubes popping out of it. I will add a couple of lines of code to our camera so that we can zoom in and out to see enemies that are far away from the player. I want to give the player some feedback when they steal a spell so using Unity's shuriken particle system, I created a little cube that will be instantiated at the enemy warlock's position and then move quickly towards the player staff. This is where we are now. I got a few things going on tonight, so this is it for today. Today we will begin by creating some icons for the spells. So the enemy warlocks were not using the blinking ability, which means the player could not steal it. So I worked a bit more on the AI. I made it so that it can detect whenever it is standing over a frostbite casted by the player and blink away from it. Then I got a pretty cool idea to display what the spell the player currently has. By creating a cube with a different color size in Blender, I could import it into Unity and using a camera to render textures, I could show this 3D model as a UI element. When you steal a spell, this cube will rotate to show you what spell you have stolen. Last spell I will create will be called Magma. Basically, we throw a lava ball up in the sky and after a small delay, it will land where the mouse is. Then I quickly changed my mind and I thought, well, lava falling from the sky wouldn't be cool. You know what would be better? A fucking piano falling from the sky. You know, like the good comics of old. Since I was already in Blender, I decided to model the enemy warlock real quick. I went for something tiny and very cute. After importing the model into Unity, I set up its animator controller as well as added a few new animations for the player. And this is where we're at now. I only have about 6 hours left to submit my game to the compo, so I need to wrap things up. I'm going to recolor the skybox, set up a quick main menu, and then record some sounds as well as a few voice lines to give the player character more charisma. With only a few minutes to spare, I was able to submit my entry and this is what the final game looks like. Grand Magus. 
If you want to play it, you can try it out on your browser. Yes, this game runs in a browser. I always create games that run on HTML5. You don't have to go vote for my games, as I'm really not expecting to win anything. I simply did this because I truly enjoy developing games, and it was hella fun. Never ending loop. All time loop. I just need to chill out for the crunch, man. I worked so many hours on this project the past three days, it's crazy. If you want to check out the code and import it into your Unity project, feel free. All the source code is available on my itch.io page. Had fun going through all my shitty coding. <laughs> in my defense, I was in a rush, okay? Alright, anyways, thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Bye bye.